welcome to The Warren Files. I'm your host, Chris McKinnell, and this evening, we're pretty blessed uh, to be with Karin Elgiberk. She is an eclectic witch, and we're going to find out exactly what that means. We're going to get into uh, an interesting place called the Hellfire Caves, and we're going to talk about different sources of power that witches use and that she personally uses. So first off, Karen, thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. You are such a lovely person. Thank you for asking me. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure. Believe me. And as I mentioned last week, Karen is also um, a member of the Warren Legacy Foundation uh, for Paranormal Research and uh, she's right here in uh, Great Britain, down in Essex, as a matter of fact. So, I am indeed. Tell, tell me, please define for me, what exactly is an eclectic witch? It's a greedy one, Chris. <laughs> it's a greedy one, let's be honest. Um, I'm not one that's ever been really good with labels, and I think... When you're spiritual, when you're a witch, when you, even in life, when you try to slot yourself into a square hole and you're not a square person and you try and put a label on who you are and what you do, you're just going to cause more hassle for yourself, body, mind and soul. So for me, an eclectic witch is I don't follow a strict path. I resonate more personally myself with the pagan path and with Heka, which is the Egyptian word for magic. Um, I also draw on some other paths like Wiccan, some voodoo, um, Gardnerian, all sorts. I work with the moon. That's really what an eclectic witch is. As and when I need certain things for spell work, for blessings, consecration, for protection and healing, because that's what I mostly work with is protection and healing. Um, I take what I need from different paths and I'm very blessed, very blessed to have um, quite a few soul and witch sisters, as I call them, because I'm a solitary witch myself. I don't actually belong to a coven, but I do have, not that there's anything wrong with that at all, but I do have a very uh, a, a close-knit group of trusted soul witch sisters and we are all actually from different paths. You know, I've got one where her, her energies are specifically with voodoo, amongst other things. So we all kind of learn from each other and take from each other um, and exchange energy, which is brilliant. And that's really, for me, what an eclectic which is. Right. I don't yeah. control myself to one path. So when you say that you work with protections and so forth, what does that mean exactly? Protection and healing. So for me, spirituality and witchcraft is combined and into one. So within my magic, within my spell casting, within my energy, if people come to me because um, I have a very, very small little business myself um, and I have a group within that. So I have people that come to me with questions about magic, about about spell casting, about ethics. Um, they come to me for protection and healing. And for protection, I help them with the right herbs to use, oils, crystals, um, about grounding and protection techniques, as well as magic circles and how to cast a magic circle. Not all witches want to cast a magic circle, and that's fine. It's each to their own. But so what is, it, what is a magic circle? A magic circle, I refer to it as a magic circle. It can be referred to as other things as well. A magic circle is when you are going to do some casting or you are going to be making some oil, so making some of your own oils and powders. You would cast some form of a magic circle. This can be done with the, and I always say this incorrectly, so people forgive me if I say this incorrectly. A thame, a thame or a thame is basically the small daggers that you see. Um, okay. Yeah, these can be anointed. Some people um, quite far in history, they have used actual swords to draw a line 
in the dirt, in the earth, around them, a circle. Okay, this, all can, this also can be drawn with your fingers. You can imagine a light energy within your mind. Some people use bells. Some people, I've seen people do the line and use the bracelet charms and they cast it all the way around. This is to not only protect yourself and your spell craft, it's to protect your tools, but it's also to amplify the energy and the intent that you're going to do within your casting and your energy works. And that's what I'm I've seen this in many, many different um, spiritual paths. It's they do something that's. Things. Yeah, it, it, the, the idea of setting up psychic boundaries and amplifications, and it's all about the ritual and about the focus. And yeah, that, it's fascinating to me how, regardless of a person's beliefs, the practices are so similar. They are, absolutely. Well, they were taken, if you think about, and um, some people may not agree with me, but if you think about <clears throat> paganism, it predates Christianity and things like Lupercalia is now known as Valentine's Day. All of these things predated Christianity. And this mm -hmm. comes from me and I have a very strong faith in a God. I was raised as in a Christian household and also a Roman Catholic household, but also in an open spiritual household. So I, that's why I think my <laughs> eclectic witch, that's where that comes from. That's where that comes from. I understand completely. I've, I've studied so many religions. And for me, knowing the history of the religions and the changes that the religions have gone through, religions are wonderful. They're a great pathway to oh, God that's been revealed by others. But for me, it's got to come from inside. It's not about the doctrine. It's about the, the spiritual uh, the, the spiritual relationship. Yes. Um, but the practices, and I, I do use them. I use Christian exorcism rites when I do exorcisms. You know, I, Absolutely. I would never. Yeah, I, I have faith in God. I have no doubt in God. Um, but I, I do have a lack of faith in the way humans interpret God. Well, interpretation <laughs> is vast and you could spend hours talking about everybody's own interpretation of the word interpretation and of a God or the gods and goddesses because there are just, it's just vast. We could be here for hours. Chris. <laughs> be here so, for hours. Let me ask you, what is, a, what is witchcraft then? Oh, good question. <laughs> Witchcraft, I can only speak from my own personal experience and my own right. beliefs, Chris. And everybody has their own beliefs and everybody has their own opinions, which they are entitled to. And I am a, one of these people that I am a champion for other people to share their opinions and to share their beliefs. And I am the first one to celebrate with them because otherwise the world would be just really boring. Let's be honest, it really would be. Mm -hmm. For me, witchcraft is... Witchcraft has become a, and I'm going to do this, and I hate doing this because when people would do this, I want to get the fingers, <laughs> but I'm going to do this. Witchcraft has become trendy. It's become a trendy label, and that in itself, it doesn't annoy me or anything like that, but I find it slightly disrespectful for or towards people like myself who have... I didn't grow up with witchcraft in my household, but I grew up with gifts. I grew up working alongside nature. Um, and I was to a certain degree, not within family, etc., but to a certain degree, I was, I hid that away for such a long time from very close friends. So witchcraft to me is something that you are born into. And sometimes you don't even know that. And sometimes it can skip a generation. And it takes an awakening of a huge force. And this is normally either something that's so severe 
um, a death, near death experience, um, and a severe trauma. It could be in the form of abuse or anything of that physical, mental, spiritual abuse, mm -hmm. anything like that, that you have this awakening. Right. It's a, it's a massive shift it's, in you. It's this huge shift. It's For me, it involves all chemical transformation almost. Alchemy is involved because energy and matter are involved. Not to get too deep. <laughs> but, oh, no, please get deep. That, that, I love that stuff. It involves that for me. For me personally, as I said, I always worked with herbs. I always tried to help certain people, but I was always afraid of coming out so to speak not that I felt I even now I don't feel I need to shout it from the rooftops but now I'm 43 years of age I am who I am I do what I do and I'm not ashamed of it and if people don't like it it's not a problem I have no issue with that but I'm not going to hide myself right. but for me my awakening was when I have a five-year-old son and when he was born the labor was immensely traumatic to the point where I had to be brought back my son almost died as well. Um, and at that time, I just remember going somewhere. And it wasn't lights and bells and beautiful rainbows. It was someone that wasn't very nice. And it wasn't, it was somewhere that was a little bit dark, that wasn't very nice. And I was told that I had things to do that I needed to be there on one side, that I needed to come back, that I had things to do. And on the other heart side, I had a darker nature that was saying, come here, come with us. And it was my faith and the facts of me being a stubborn old thing <laughs> that was like, I'm, I'm not leaving my child. I'm not leaving my child. I've waited 30 odd years for a child. I'm not waiting, leaving my child or my family. And it was that strength that I had. And I do believe angels were involved. I do believe gods were involved that brought me back from that. And it took me some time to recover after that physically and mentally. Um, and when I, when I came around, etc., for a year after that, in the first year of my son's life, I had... It was just, it was like sensory overload. It was just sensory overload for me. Spirit, empathy, you name it. You were Everything. wide open. I was wide open with no protection whatsoever because the protection that I had learned and known before that, witchcraft wise, wasn't enough. Right. So for me, that whole, ex that whole experience, yeah, it was really pants. But I had to go through that to be where I am now, to be doing what I'm doing now, to be helping people, to be assisting people when they ask me. I'm not someone that just goes up and say, hey, do you need help? When I'm asked, I will help people as much as I can. And if I am unable to help people, I make sure they are put into contact with someone that can, like take it further than my knowledge and my experience base. So witchcraft is energy, it's, it's nature, it's the universe, it's just, it's everything. For me, my, I, I, I love that explanation. Um, it gets into quantum physics for me and that resonates with me. Um, but there's another thing about witchcraft, which you didn't mention, and that's the long, 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 history of it and the reality is witchcraft is probably the first religion it's the one where the hunters and gatherers were the the gatherers were the women and they were the wise ones they were the ones that learned about nature they were the ones that brought that that knowledge to the next generation and i i think that's probably where witchcraft got started was that herbalism and that that power of nature and learning from it and, and the fear of it from people that were ignorant to the knowledge of it and you have to remember chris that because <laughs> it's going to sound really strange 
I, there are certain things, you can ask any witch, I'm very open and upfront about things, but there are certain things about witchcraft and its history that I, I don't discuss to a certain degree because I, it's going to sound really strange and people are going to go, oh my God, she's crazy, but I feel it. And my sisters feel it. Yeah. And there are beliefs that the reason why certain witches have pigmentation in their skin is because they are from the ancestral trauma of where we were burnt. Oh. Okay. There are those beliefs. There are some witches that have those beliefs. Um, there's, there's so much that <clears throat> goes into it. It's unbelievable. And a majority of the men and women that were that were burnt at that time or hung were not actually witches. Of course not, no. They were, they were midwives and herbalists who right. just lived off the land, which is what everybody did at that time anyway. Mm -hmm. And everybody remembers Salem and everything else, but, but not a lot of people remember Connecticut and, and lots of other places. Yeah, that took and place before Salem. It predates Salem. It, yep, it predates Salem. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm from Connecticut. But there you go, you know, you know, absolutely. Yeah, except it isn't taught in school. <laughs> it's Salem not. is mentioned in passing, but the, the, mm. the witch trials in Connecticut, nothing. Uh, crickets. There's a, lot, there's a lot of things that have been taken by... There's a lot of religions. There's a lot of things, especially paganism, witchcraft, all sorts of things that have been taken, and it still goes on today, that have been taken and abused and twisted out of ignorance and fear and put forward for the benefit financially and religiously for other people and for power yeah for absolutely absolutely it was said yeah. that oh well as soon as you mentioned witchcraft i've had these issues before that i you know i i'm not someone that goes out and goes oh i'm a witch hi my name's corinne you, <laughs> you don't do that you know but if people say to me, oh i see you like crystals and things like that and are you spiritual and do you do this and um things like that and I say yeah absolutely I am and we get into conversation and I do say yeah I'm a witch so I practice these things and I help to protect and heal and things like that and some people are like wow that's amazing and other people step back immediately because they think oh, demon sacrifice yeah, witch. which is sacrifice. Satan it's, it's ridiculous of course it's ridiculous personally. But there are Satanists out there and I don't personally have an issue with that as long as they are not hurting people on purpose etc that is their own personal path and their own personal choice and good luck to them I wish them every luck but for me personally there's no devil worship in witchcraft in true no. witchcraft there's no that they're devil separate. worshiping they are yeah separate they are separate don't get me wrong chris if people threaten my family or my friends or anything like that that i'm going to do everything i can to protect them and that brings in faith that brings in my craft and everything but i'm not knowingly going to hurt somebody on purpose it's right. just not within my makeup right i know you are and i don't blame you i I'm dealing with something going on with my family right now. And of course I'm going to do everything in my power to protect my family. Absolutely. The tiger comes oh. out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you mentioned that you, you deal with many different um, sources of power. Can you define some of these for us? Do you mean as in where with regards to my head? Like, yeah or voodoo or whatever, uh, all of them. I, I'd like people I, to understand them a little more. 
Yeah, absolutely. Voodoo is not, I've only just started touching into voodoo because one of my sisters, um, that's her area. And I started touching into that. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into that because I don't know enough to be able to talk about that and give it. Be, be careful with that one because they can be quite jealous. Sorry? Those entities can be quite jealous if you're mixing uh, pantheons. <laughs> Just be careful. Yeah, that's fine. I don't actually work with a voodoo or hoodoo deity. Okay. But I use some of the crafts from that within my work specifically. This is why I say when you're eclectic, you can use certain bits and pieces. It's like graveyard dirt. I use graveyard dirt. I, I didn't understand that. Graveyard dirt. Oh, oh yes, sorry. Yes. So that is voodoo who mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And there are certain ways you need, there are certain ways and certain times and certain rules that you follow to collect this. Um, but you don't have to work with a deity for that. You work with the spirit of the grave that you go to. But I'm, as I said, I'm still learning bits and pieces with regards to that. But my sister's the kind of the person I go to for that. But with um, my Heka, my, my, my Isfet for Chaos, it's, I'm just starting to do my shamanism course. So for me, studying the shamanism side of this, it's, it's again, it's connecting to... It's a deeper connection to a source, which is through the spiritual realm. Okay. And with shamanism, it's about breakdown of the ego and releasing it. It's about traveling through a spiritual realm and connecting to the source through the deities, the gods, the goddesses like Bastet, Sekhmet, Osiris, Isis, and going through rites of passage to make these connections, to interlock. And when you do this, it's another form of alchemy. So you, when you bring these things back, you bring back knowledge, you bring back healing. And it's also connected to past life as well. And all these things are in interconnected. And I think when you do something like this, you do then connect with the deities. So there are certain deities that you would connect with depending on what sort of work you were going to do. So if I was working with someone, um, a client for fertility mm -hmm. or childbirth, I would go to Bastet. If I was working with someone with regards to motherhood issues or problems, things like that, I would go to Isis. If I was working with someone for funerary rites or someone that had passed, I would go to Horus, the child, Horus, mm -hmm. um, and Osiris as well. Right, the father. Absolutely. So that, that's the sort of thing that you would work with <laughs> in regards to that. Um, I work a lot with nature as well because I believe the universe and nature have just provided us with so much herbs, flowers, just the energy in itself and working with trees i'm really big on trees and tree spirits and things like that as well i was talking to catherine earlier about it as well um there's yeah, nothing this is like catherine sorlos everyone uh yes. which if you haven't noticed um <laughs> that's yeah, her. Check out her program mystical whispers i'm using her yes. background because i'm in her home right now she's amazing now, you're, you're, you're talking about um predominantly Egyptian shamanism. But the truth yes. is, I'm listening to you, and this can be indigenous South American and North American shamanism. It could this be any shamanism. Link. Yes. Yeah. But this is it, what we're It's all about breaking down the ego and the spiritual journey and all, everything you said, including the nature spirits and, and recognizing the power there. All of that. All of that is shamanism. Yes. But that's why... When I say shamanism, I don't specifically say Egyptian because they are all so interconnected and interlinked. And for me, that's why I say witchcraft, spirituality, shamanism, the chakras, 
the energy centers, you know, the, the grounding and protection techniques that I use about bubbling up and tree roots from your feet and the earth chakra style and, and all of that, it, it's just all interconnected. So that's why, that's why I call myself an eclectic witch because I'm, I'm like this. <laughs> and we're going to get into the interconnectedness of everything and a lot more interesting information in just a moment. You are watching The Warren Files. Please do check out our YouTube channel, The Warren Files, and please subscribe because it does help us to get the word out to others. Thank you for joining us. I'm with my guest, Karen L.G. Burke. She is an eclectic witch here in um, Essex, England, and we are having a really, really deep and interesting conversation. I'm loving this. Um, <laughs> Let's get into, we, we were at the break, we were just talking about the interconnectedness of everything and how everything is energy. But you also work with the five elements. And Dave. that's really important as a good lead into what we're going to get into in a few moments. What are the five elements? Everyone's heard of the first four, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Well, everybody knows um, earth, air, fire, and water. And the fifth element, is mostly known as spirit okay and spirit is the all-encompassing it's the akasha it's the fifth main element that encompasses them all so when you look at a symbol or a sigil like the pentacle you're looking at earth air fire water and spirit is the circle to encompass all and that's what the pentacle stands for so when you're looking at this fifth element of spirit you're looking at akasha you're looking at all of it and for me and this is just me personally for me personally the fifth element is not just about spirit it's about energy energy for me is in everything it's in and um, touching again on the old egypt thing as well it's in the sky it's in the earth it's in the rain it's in the trees. It's, it's in everything, absolutely everything. The food we eat, the water we drink, universal energy. In, in um, reality, matter. science would tell you everything else is an illusion. Everything is energy. When, yeah. when you look at the map of the universe, it is a map of fluctuations in energy throughout the universe. Yeah. And where it coalesces, that's where you have matter. That's where you have the stars and that's where you mm. have your galaxies, yeah. but it's all interconnected energy. So yeah, it amazes me that this information that's passed down from the ancients, you know, thousands of years is right on the money. And it's only now that we're catching up with it. We're saying, huh, look at that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it, I think it's now, more so now, people are realising that there is a better quality of life and connecting more with their spiritual side. I mean, for me, I, I'm, Catherine Cerulos and I were, were laughing earlier because I said to I'm a bit of an old hippie, you know, peace and love. <laughs> I am a bit of an old hippie. So people are connecting more with, their spiritual side and they're thinking about the food they're putting in their bodies they're thinking about um yoga or just even meditation there are so many apps out there now for meditation breathing exercises mm -hmm. centering yourself color therapy mm -hmm. all these things and people are saying oh these are these are thing, new things etc and things like that no they're not they're not um, Native Americans work with them, Egyptians work with them, um, paganism, paganism, everybody worked with these. Numerology predates Ancient Christianity. Hindus, Buddhists. Absolutely. It's been, and predates that, actually. Yeah, absolutely. So these things, it, it's just all energy. So really when it comes to connecting it, working with my witchcraft, these things are so important because if I'm doing... If I'm doing a healing, because at the moment I'm just actually also studying for my Reiki level two as well. If I'm 
doing healing, a healing spell for somebody, there's certain things I need to know. I need to know where it is on their body, if it's physical or if it's mental, um, what it's about, etc. I will then use the right herbs with the right vibrational energy. Again, energy. I will also use mm -hmm. colours for the colour energy. It then goes along even to candle magic, where you use the right colour of candle for that energy. Mm -hmm. There are certain colours with certain candles that you use. Green for healing, for luck. You've got black candles for absorbing negative energy. Red for love and passion. You know, all of these things, blue for wisdom, absolutely everything. And they even align. And, you know, for people who are watching this right now and they're saying, well, that's far out there. You know, in Christianity, <laughs> they have exactly the same thing when it comes to the candles. Yes. Um, the white candle is very, very important. The, the, the honeycomb natural wax candle is very, very important. And, and they wax. have specific reasons for that. Mm. So it, it isn't out there. This is ancient knowledge that has been incorporated into the Christian church, but came from long before. And they, please, burn oh, and they burn incense. And they burn incense as well. Yeah. Incense has been burnt centuries. Millennia. Yeah. Millennia. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, even in Neanderthal graves, they found red ochre put on yeah. the bodies. So yeah. there was a there was a ritual reason for that as well. We yeah. have always been um, in tune with these things. It's only Absolutely. Now that, that science is finally catching up and saying, well, well, yeah, maybe there isn't just superstition involved here. Maybe there's actually something to this. We, as, as people with our energy, as humans with our energy, we were connected. We were like this. This is my perfect belief. But we were connected like this with spirits, with universal energy life forces, with fey folk with all of these things with the earth and the sky we were connected we had this connection this source and when people talk about oh well you know people are psychic or people have connection with spirit i do believe at one stage that everybody had that connection mm -hmm. and somewhere that it just that disconnection happened and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and then it's people like myself and my sisters and yourself and Michelle and Catherine and other people in the foundation that are putting this out there now, you know, and there's so many people that are realizing this and the amount of people that message me with questions and, and everything else or with problems and issues. And I, I just feel really honored that they come to me really. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Now, I'll never push my help on anybody, but if, no. if you need it, we're, we're all here for you. Absolutely. It's like when I do my, I do readings as well. You never, even if you get something through, if you're standing in the queue at Tesco, you never, you get something through, you never tap them on the shoulder and say, oh, by the way, these are people's lives. You don't play with it. Exactly. Yeah. No, it has to be invited. Absolutely. Yeah. And even then, you've got to be careful. I used to terrify people because nine yeah. times out of ten, people don't want the truth. They want you to reassure them that their belief is correct. Yeah. They don't want to hear what's going to have a happy to life, lots of money, and a brand new car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and love, love is coming. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to hear the truth most no. of the time. So I, I know I don't even do it anymore. You know, um, you had mentioned something to me. It's, it was a something you had looked into, and I'm fascinated just from the name. What are the Hellfire Caves? <laughs> and when do I, when do I get to join you and come check them out? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I class myself, and you know, Chris, because I've always been honest. I class myself as a rookie, experienced investigator, paranormal investigator. Um, I I go to events. I don't have a paranormal team myself, but I go to events um, and I go with um, a well-known paranormal professional, very good professional team. 
and I go to their events with them and they go to the Hellfire Caves. There's, there's a few. There's one in Ireland, but there's another one that's in West Wickham. Um, oh, don't ask me where that is. Good grief. I should have thought about that. Um, it's up that that's way. That's okay. Folks can Google it. <laughs> Absolutely. West Wickham. Um, or oh, it's actually West Wycombe, I think I call it. Um, and it's absolutely amazing, these huge long tunnels, um, and it was mostly for men. Um, and are they, are they men-made tunnels? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, they are, yes. And they actually, um, they actually belong to a specific lord whose house is above them. There's also, it's like a big mansion above them. Um, there's also a mausoleum above the caves as well. It's very well known. People go there for tours and everything else. Um, and I go there for this specific paranormal teams events. And um, whenever I go to do any kind of, and I, I go to join an investigation, I should say, when I go to join an investigation of any kind, I, I always know where it is, but if it's somewhere where I've never been before, I always like to go there, what I call clear. I don't want to know mm -hmm. the history. I don't want to know anything about it because sometimes I might get, an, sometimes not all the time, but sometimes I might get an opening beforehand. Mm -hmm. and it's normally a week to three days beforehand and I might draw things or write things down, etc., and stuff like that. And this is what happened here. Um, and <laughs> to say the least, um, I, the drawings, I saw people in the walls, I saw people actually standing up like bodies in the walls, etc. It was quite crazy. Um, and it turned out that there were and there are bones in the walls of mm -hmm. this. Um, so it's an ossuary? Sorry? Well? It's an ossuary? Um, a place where they store human remains in, in well, make... above, yeah, but I didn't know there was a mausoleum there at the time. I didn't know. I just knew there was caves. I didn't know that there was a house over it. I didn't know there was a mausoleum over there at all. So there were bodies above the caves in graves and mausoleums. Um, but they'd also put bones when they had, the parts of the cave had caved in. Mm -hmm. um, but some of their they had done excavation in some of the caves to look for stuff and they had found bones actually in the walls. And when it comes to magic and things like that and the things that they had been doing in there and it, there were satanic rituals that took place in there. Um, they put bones in the walls to amplify, which I think is horrendous, but each to their own. That's, yeah, um, it's yeah, it's horrendous. Um, but when I was there, you know, you go in there and with, with the events, you go in there and they do a little, a little bit of a talk first and they split you up into groups. I kept getting, my throat kept getting restricted. And it didn't feel like anyone's hands were around my neck or anything like that. But my throat was quite restricted. And I kept, you know, when you want to go, <coughs> want to keep clearing your throat. And I felt my throat was getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And the tone of my voice is quite specific and it kept getting lower and lower. And I said to one of the, because I know the paranormal team quite well, I said to one of the, the lead investigators, I said, my voice is going and she said, I can hear it. And I said, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes and I'll leave it. Anyway, I ended up taking myself out because I started to feel really sick. And for mm. me, that's telling me that an energy is trying to come in because I could feel it coming in from the back. Right. Right. if it was trying to come in through my neck through the back mm -hmm. um so took myself out you know re re -jujued, re bubbled myself up with protection everything else and went back in there but it happened quite a few times um and in the end they were basically he told me that he kept pointing he kept going like that to me and pointing to his heart and i kept seeing a jar mm -hmm. the spirit who, who was doing that Oh, okay, okay. The spirit that was trying to come through and use my voice, in the end, I had to say to him, <clears throat> you're not going to use my voice. I do not give you permission to do that at all. Right. No. Um, you have to be quite stern. <laughs> I said, you're not going to do that at all. Um, if you want to communicate to me, you can talk to me, but you're not going to use me in any way. Right. Um, and he ended up 
tapping me on the chest and giving me the sign of a heart and showing me a jar, which oddly enough, I had, I had drawn on my opening before I'd gone there. Um, and the team that I was in, the lead investigator, I was talking to him and he said to me, you're not going to believe it. But what had happened was that the gentleman was actually the keeper of the books, which I had mm -hmm. said, I said, is there a man that's the keeper of the books? He keeps telling me he's the keeper of the books and he's keys. I can hear his keys jingling because he's following me around. And they said, yeah, there is a keeper of the book, etc." And we looked up his name and everything else. And apparently one on his death, he wanted his heart removed, put into a jar and put and kept into the caves and kept in the caves. So that's what that connection was because he wanted his heart to be kept inside the caves. Unfortunately, somebody stole that jar. We don't know. It wasn't anything to do with, it wasn't at that time, you know, history had shown quite some time ago that that jar had been taken that contained his heart. Right. Bless him. So I think that's what he was trying to tell me at that time. Yeah. You know, the, the, you mentioned the spirit coming from behind, trying to talk for you, which I know from all the mediums I work with, it mm. always enters from behind. And yeah. I, I find pa fascinating parallels to a place that I um, I spent a bit of time at in Port in Sintra, Portugal, known right, as yeah. the Alchemist's Palace, and it's an extraordinary place. Um, it is still used in uh, Nights of the Full Moon by the Secret Society. They have got one of these um, holes that goes down a spiral uh, staircase in the ground. And then there are these unbelievably cool caves with the rock is all bubbly and has holes in it. And there's waterfalls and everything. It's all, it was all designed by an Italian uh, architect. And if anybody's interested, um, you can see those photos on my personal uh, page uh chris mckinnell of course uh but y you'll you'll fall in love with the place um but it, it has a long history of um the occult as a matter of fact all of sintra which is one of the most beautiful places in the world yeah. um has a long history with the occult yeah this is what the hellfire caves does and it was predominantly men so mm -hmm. I, that was another thing that I don't think they liked a female coming in. Right. Who's, who's, I, I, I don't, I'm constantly within my craft, within my energy, within my spirit work and psychic work. I'm constantly developing and evolving. It's a constant process for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm learning all the time. I'm learning all the time, new things. But I think that even though I was fully protected, it just shows you that you can't dabble in these things. You can't yeah. dabble in these things. You can't. My first ever experience of going on an investigation was quite some time ago and I had gone to a place called Kelvin Kelvin Hatch secret bunker that's in Kelvin in Essex mm -hmm. and I had had an opening a week before and at that time I didn't know what an opening was all I know is that a spirit had turned up and they wouldn't leave me alone and it was to the point where they had almost knocked me over because they came at me for force and I didn't know what it was um, and I'd drawn all of these things and I had gone to this investigation and all of these things that I had seen had shown had come up, but I got scratched and it was, I got scratched and it was three scratches across my back, just below my neck. And I really didn't feel well for at least a week or two weeks afterwards, really didn't feel well. Um, I didn't have an attachment, but I just had that after effect energy and I'd gone in there excited about my first 
joining my first investigation event. But I hadn't gone in there fully protected right. with the knowledge that I have now. And I was asking questions and basically peeing it off. <laughs> basically peeing it off. You, ha you have to realise, I think, people, people don't realise that you see movies and you see social media and you see... Um, Terrible TV some, shows. Yeah, these social media things where they go and they do what they call poking the bear. Yeah. I call it poking Stupid. the bear, wind people up. You can't do that because it may not be you that gets hurt. It may not be you that gets affected. It could be someone else. Yeah, it could be and a loved one. Something. Absolutely, or because you've said something or done something, you know? Yeah. So, it, it could be anybody else in the room or in the, in the building. It, just because you're the one that provokes it doesn't mean that it's going to lash out at you. It's going to lash out at whoever is most vulnerable and capable. They are capable of affecting. I had that once on when I went. It was an investigation, but it wasn't an event. It was via a group. And they said, you know, you can bring your own equipment, things like that. And you're separated into groups with a lead investigator, but you do your own thing. So I went with one or two of my friends. Um, and we were doing what we were doing. And unbeknownst to me, someone within that group was poking the bear. They were in another room. But because I was the sensitive one in the group, I was the one that got it. Yeah. <laughs> Despite being protected, I was the one that had to kind of say, hang on a minute, back off. I know you're annoyed, but back off. And I'll, it was like, it was almost having a conversation saying, I know you're annoyed. I'm sorry. I will speak to them and tell them to stop. I, uh... And I got really angry with this person. I said, you can't do that. You're, you're doing this. You're behaving this way. And they're coming for me. So stop or leave because you're messing it all up for everyone else. Absolutely. And I, you know, I'm dealing with a case that's very similar to this right now um, in Germany where they had gone into a Nazi uh, indoctrination school for children where mm. they were brainwashing the children. And in the basement there on one wall is an upside down cross. And on the opposing wall is an upside down pentacle or it's pentagram. And yeah, and um, <clears throat> they had been doing occult rituals there. The team made a huge mistake. They were new, they weren't really experienced yet. And they had been in there two nights and they thought they understood that it was safe and what the heck, we're going to start bringing the public in to educate them and oh, no. probably, you know, make a little bit of money. I don't know. And they brought in a, a bunch of people. And one of them was a woman who happened to be psychic. And she saw this little girl who was very pathetic looking. And, and she felt very bad for her. But when the girl tried to take her hand, she saw this evil grin come on the girl's face. And she pushed the girl away. And... Things, and this was three years ago, things have been escalating ever since then. And if you're interested in this case, then you should turn in next week because I'm actually having the team leader on this case talk about wow. this case with me. Okay. So a Nazi demon, pretty interesting. <sighs> wow. It, was actually, Nazi demon seems kind of redundant, doesn't it? They're all demons. Was the psychic... Um... What's the one I'm looking for here? She had no idea uh, how to protect herself. She had never been on a case in her life. Yep, she was just this innocent, empathic, open person. Oh. Now she's part of the team and trying to protect herself. But now her loved one, her husband, was pushed down the stairs and his, le his foot was broken. Um, it, it's gotten pretty bad. Mm. Uh, but we're going to get into that next week. Okay. So you had mentioned your son earlier and we're, yeah. we're coming uh, to a point where we're going to have to wrap up soon, but your, your son has been diagnosed with autism. He has. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And 
One of the things that I have found, um, in fact, I just had lunch with a, a nice young man today um, who's a paranormal investigator and happens to be autistic. And one of the things I found in, I believe that these folks are the next step in our evolution. They're often far more gifted. And I know that your gifts run in, in the, 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 fem, the female side of the family. But what's going on with, with your family now? <laughs> it's my son, he's, he's five years of age. Bless him. He diagnosed in 2018 with autism and sensory issues. Um, he's, I would, I would say he's definitely sensitive, empathically sensitive. Um, and I think children in general are, because they are a pure source of energy. Yes. They are like very much like animals as well. They are a pure source of energy. They see things and they hear things sometimes that as we get older and we become more, I don't know the word I'm looking for here. We become Closed up. more adapted to social and social and, and all sorts of things. It's, we lose that purity. You know, we, we lose that little bit of purity and that little connection. Um, he's, he does chat to people, bless him. Sometimes he'll, he'll be in his bedroom and he'll burst out laughing and I think, oh, he's reading a book, etc. And I'll pop in there and I say, and I'll say to him, darling, who are you talking to? There. I go, what's there, darling? And he go, which is a sign for friends. And I'll go, okay. Now this could be an imaginary friend because <laughs> I had an imaginary friend. Apparently my mum said I had lots of imaginary friends. Um, I was, like I said, I was raised in a very open household. It was just myself and my mum. Um, and I was never felt to, I was never felt to believe that what I saw or anything like that was bad or negative. It was okay. You see what you see. It's okay. If you ever get worried, you then you come to me and you talk to me about it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the way that I am with my son. You know, um, and I think that when you're like that with children, when they know that they can come to you with regards to anything, then that gives them a sense of security to not feel ashamed of these things. That if you do sense things or you feel a certain way, it's OK to feel that way. You, you're not ostracized. You're not abnormal whether your extra needs or special needs or not, it's okay. There's, it's, it's not a taboo. I mean, that's another reason why, you know, when you very kindly, thank you so much, um, said to me, you know, do I fancy doing this interview? It's, it's to get rid of the taboo that's surrounded with witchcraft. It's to get rid of the taboo that's surrounded with autism. The more people know about this and the more we can educate people through our own experiences about these things, the better it is. And I really okay. do truly believe that. I really do. We can help people as much as we can through our own knowledge and our own experiences. And, and, and I always follow this rule through with autism, with my witchcraft, with my paranormal work, with my spirit work. When I'm asked or required to, I help as much as I can within my own area of knowledge and experience. And once I have gone as far as I can, I'm not about to dabble into something that I do not have the knowledge or experience in. So I am then going to say to this person, right, this is the extent of my knowledge and experience. I've gone as far as I can, but. I'm not going to leave you on your own. Let me pass you to this person or let me, I'm going to pass them on to someone that knows more than I do. Uh, you know, and I think it's a good place for us to wrap up this evening because 
you, you've said it. We're here to educate. We're not here to overstep our own bounds. And even yeah. myself in the foundation, you know, everyone thinks I'm an expert on this, that, and everything. The truth is I rely on so many of you to <laughs> get my answers so that I can help people properly. I don't want to hurt anybody. You know, um, Thank you. you, Karen, you'd mentioned you have a small business. What is this business? Where people, where can people find you if they want your help, if they want um, your, your products, such as your, your herbal uh, remedies and your, your oils and so forth? Where, where, where can they find you? I am known as the Wild and Free Witch. I have a Facebook page. And can I you also say that again? Have, yeah, of course. I'm known as the Wild and Free Witch. Wild and Free Witch. I like that. <laughs> the hippie vibe. <laughs> it encompasses spiritual um, alchemy, Reiki readings and witchcraft. Basically, I have a Facebook page and I also have a private group where um, I talk about all sorts of things from recipes to transformation or chemical to absolutely everything. And people comment on there, they pop posts up. So I can drop a link in and send you the link. It's not a problem at all, Chris. That would be lovely. Please do it in the chat. Um, remember, everyone, this is a pre-recorded episode, but I will be there at 1 o'clock in the morning, my time. Uh, <laughs> Karen, you are more than welcome to be there as well. <laughs> I will try my best. I may be asleep. I have a five-year-old. <laughs> I understand that completely. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Karen, thank you so much for your sharing your knowledge. It's been lovely speaking with you. It's been and a joy. Please remember, check us out on the Warren Files YouTube channel. And keep in mind that we are here to help you. God bless you. And we'll see you next week.